Okay, here I want to talk about the Moliere chart. This is taken from Wikipedia, and I'm going to use this chart to describe this uh, particular chart to describe some things about it. The Moliere chart is for steam. This Moliere chart is for steam, and I want to give some credit to the authors. This is uh, from EMOC, and it was created from data retrieved from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which is a great source to go for data. Uh, they they made a very nice drawing of this chart, and um, this is their license that they've given us to use this, and um, just want to give them credit for it. EMOC, nice nice small year chart. Okay, what I've done is I've taken an, an image of the chart and uh, put in the lines of enthalpy. A small year chart works with. Uh, and some of the references for enthalpy. This is uh, approximately 1700 here, this line along here. Enthalpy is 1700. Those are the horizontal lines represent H or enthalpy. Here we have about 1100. Don't have to know the exact numbers now, but I want you to see that those are horizontal lines. The entropy lines are vertical lines, and they go up and down. Like so, here's 1.2, a value of 1.2 BTUs per pound degree Rankin. And here's a value of 2.2. So the entropy lines are vertical lines, whereas the enthalpy lines I've drawn here in blue are horizontal lines. Now, um, over here, you'll see these black lines are temperature lines. So follow, this is a temperature line. And notice that it goes along and then curves down as you get to the left of the chart. Now these lines, um, I'll draw it in green, are pressure lines. Pressure lines come along like this, and over here you have low pressure, and over here you have high pressure. High pressure. And so the uh, pressure lines, if you follow one of these down, then that pressure line goes down through what we call the superheated region. This region up in the top right hand is the superheated region. Over here we have, I'll put it in red, is the supercritical region. Okay. Now, at about 3200, I encourage you to go to the web and look at this chart closer, and I'm going to zoom in on it in a minute. Right here is the critical pressure of about 3200 psi for steam. And over here, if you follow these temperature lines, these are temperature lines here, 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 and here are the temperature lines. Right here would be the boundary for the for the um, critical temperature, which is about just under 1200 degrees Rankin. And so this is the dividing mark here between the critical temperature and temperatures below the critical temperature. As you recall, below the critical temperature, you can condense a gas. And so down in here, we have the liquid region. This is the liquid region, supercritical region here, superheated region. And then, of course, down here we have what we call the mixture region or the saturated region. Okay, so let me pause for a minute and I'll zoom in on this a little bit and look at each of these regions and what's important about them. Okay, I've expanded this and put some notations in so that you can see. This is the superheated region up here. Down here we have the saturated region. And I made some notations, like for instance here, the temperature line here, this temperature line is 700 degrees Rankin, which is about 240 degrees Fahrenheit. If we follow it over until it reaches the saturated region, you'll see it reaches it at a pressure of about, oh, I don't know, 20 PSI, a little over 20 PSI. This is 20 PSI. This is 10 PSI, so in between there, we have 14.7 or 1 atmosphere, and you recall the boiling point of water is 212. So 
if you followed that temperature line over, you'd get about 212 there, where the uh, where the pressure is 14.7, and you intersect the saturated region. If we went out from the saturated region, started heating it up higher, remember, once you've boiled all the water and you can start s heating the superheated vapor, then you're going along at constant pressure to higher and higher enthalpies, because remember, the enthalpies are the horizontal lines, and we're crossing to higher and higher temperatures here also. Once you reach the edge of the uh, saturated region, you no longer find temperature lines below in this in this area down here. What you do is you would know that once it's saturated at a given pressure, you'll have a fixed temperature. So, so long as the pressure is constant at 14.7, the temperature in here will be 212. Now another point I wanted to make about this uh, superheated region up here you notice that the low pressures are over here on this side, 10, go on up. Here's your 3,200 PSI here. Very high pressures are over here. Notice that the temperature lines are parallel to the pressure lines as long as you're in the superheated region at very low pressures. But notice as I follow that temperature line, it's parallel to H. Because you recall that dH for an ideal gas is equal to Cp dt. That's something we've learned or are learning about an ideal gas, dH equals Cp dt. And so you would expect at a fixed temperature that the enthalpy lines correspond or are actually parallel to the temperature lines. Notice that as you get to higher and higher pressure, these temperature lines start to curve away from the horizontal enthalpy lines, and that departure is due to something other than temperature, so you know right as it starts to curve that you're no longer an ideal gas. Looking at the mole year is really great for determining when you start to depart from ideal gas behavior, because you see these curved lines here indicate that non-ideal gas behavior. And of course, you'd as you'd expect, that occurs at higher pressures, and the higher the pressure, the more the divergence away from that horizontal enthalpy line. Okay, so finally I just wanted to uh, show again these four regions. You've got your supercritical region over here, high pressures above the critical temperature, here's the critical temperature, and above the critical pressure, which is this line along here. Supercritical region, you've got the superheated region, above the saturated boundary. This is the 100% quality line right here. And so you'd have 100% quality. Below here you'd have 90% quality, 80% quality, and on down as you go into this saturated region. Remember this is the mixture region. And then finally if you go to 0% quality, way down here you've got the saturated line, saturated liquid region, or the saturated liquid line here, and then to the left of that is the saturated or the subcooled or compressed liquid region. So the four regions of the Molière chart, the Molière chart is very handy. I suggest you use it when you're working problems with steam. Try to find out when you can get the properties from the Molière ch chart because it gives you some insight in the fluid behavior, the steam behavior, and it's a lot faster than looking the properties up in the tables, particularly if you're forced to interpolate in the tables. So that's a, kind of a summary of the Moliere chart.